Hello, I'm Mathieu from Noodlebox and today I'm going to give you an overview of Carnegie, the Valley of the Lakes. So this game is about explorers in British Columbia, so in Canada, and you're going to explore this Valley of the Lakes. It is a tile placement game with some elements of set collection. It is a game for two to four players ages 10 and up, and it plays for around 45 minutes. So in this game, what you're trying to achieve is to get the most victory points and you're going to do that through three means. You're going to have objectives which uh, indicate how you score points with those uh, reward tiles. You're going to have uh, gold nuggets. The gold nuggets give you points according to a majority. So uh, if you have the most gold nuggets cards, you get the most points. And finally, you have the explorer which rewards uh, the, the diversity of the rewards. So um, the way the game plays is very simple you're going to take turns playing things. So basically what you do in a turn is uh, play your tile. So you have to match it. I cannot put uh, the uh, water onto land. I have to match uh, plains with plains, mountain with mountains, water with water. So uh, then you build a building. You have three types of building available. So you have the silos, the warehouses and the farmhouses. So all of them have different properties and Basically, the bigger the building is, uh, the better it is, but the more specific it is. So uh, the silo gets uh, to gather for all of the area, whereas the, uh, the warehouse allows you to collect in two areas, and, but it's stronger. And finally, the farmhouse collects only in one area, but it's super strong. So let's admit I would uh, build this uh, warehouse here because I want to collect in the mountain and in the plains. Um, why in the plains? Uh, I'm going to tell you later. Once I have placed my building, I will look if I close an area. The plains is still open, uh, the uh, mountain is still open, so I can draw new tiles. So I'm going to choose this one because I want to score a lot of points on the mountain uh, and it has a big mountain. Replace it with a new tile, which is kind of good for me. But uh, sadly, I have already drawn, and finally, we're going to move on to the next player. So uh, the next player would do the same, and fortunately, that player could uh, close the area, but that brown player would put a silo here. So uh, the area is closed. So what it does, it triggers collection. So we're going to collect things, in this case, apples, uh, farmer, and wheat. And we're going to check the influence of the players. Remember, I told you that we have different influences for different types of buildings. And uh, first, we're going to check the weakest influence of the area. So it's going to be brown with the silo. It's only one point. The warehouses are two points and the farmhouses are three points. So in this case, I win and uh, brown loses. So uh, the way it goes is that uh, if you have the lowest score, you're going to uh, get a compensation. You're going to get something out of it. So for example, the objectives of this player would be, for example, to uh, get different resources, wood, but mostly stone here. So maybe stone is good for that player and that player would take two stone. So that player takes two stone and then we move on to sharing what's inside of the area. So starting with the, the highest player, me, uh, people are going to collect resources according to their, their influence. So in this case, I want to collect as many peasants and apples as possible. So I'm going to take the peasant and the apple and then leave the other player with the wheat, which I totally didn't want. And then we're going to move on to the next player and so on and so forth. And we're going to play until the players have no more buildings. When the players have no more buildings, uh, we're going to uh, get new objective cards and we're going to get new buildings and expand and do another round of this. And when it's the second time and that we don't have any buildings anymore, we're going to count victory points. So we reveal objectives and score points according to them. So uh, for example, with these objectives, I might score uh, for the apple here, three points. For this one, uh, five points or eight points for these ones. Um, and we have other ways of scoring. So the other way of scoring that we have is the explorer. For each set of rewards that are not of the same color, so for every four rewards of different colors, uh, regardless of shapes and types, you get four points. 
And finally, uh, you have the Nuggets, and the Nuggets are a majority scoring. Uh, so if you have the most Nuggets, you get 10 points, and if you, have, uh, if you are the second, you get 5 points, and so on and so forth. So you just add up all of your points, and you've got a score, and you know that the highest score is the, is the winner. So that's it for Kanagan in this game. Uh, you're going to check your objective quite a lot, and you want to get onto interesting areas, you're going to expand on the areas, but you have to think about closing the areas and how much influence do you, do you dedicate to a specific area. So you know almost everything about this game, so uh, explore well and see you on the box. <laughs>